Alrighty, so this is the last video in the series. Um, this is your PERT practice test, and we're going to do questions 27 through 30. So solve the system of two equations. So if you remember back to solving systems of equations, um, there are three different methods. You can graph them, you can substitute, or you can do elimination. So this equation, it doesn't really matter which one most of the time. However, in this case, this is set up pretty well for elimination because they're both in standard form and you have a positive Y and a negative Y and they have the same number. So they're going to end up canceling each other out. So if we were to add these two together, we would have X plus 2X, which is 3X. These would completely cancel and then 8 plus 10 is 18. So then we're going to go ahead and solve for X by dividing both sides by 3. So x is going to equal 18 divided by 3 is 6. Now, it looks like you want to do 6, but <laughs> it doesn't want x. It actually wants y. So what you have to do here is we have to substitute x in to solve for y, which is pretty easy. We can use either equation that we want to. I'm definitely going to use this top one. It just looks easier. So instead of x plus y, I'm going to do 6 plus y equals 8. You can subtract 6 from both sides, and y is going to equal 2. Looks crazy, but that one was pretty easy. So let's go ahead and do this. Number 28, find the x-intercept for a graph. So you can think about all the things that you want um, that can be just a lot of things. <laughs> um, however, uh, this actually doesn't require you to do any math. Um, I can show you how to do it just to make sure that we check our answer, but we can definitely use test taking strategies in this case. So in order to be, um, this is a really sloppy graph, <laughs> but in order to be an x-intercept, it means it falls on the x-axis, right? So it's going to fall somewhere along here where every single point on this line has the exact same y value, which is zero. So in order to be an intercept, an x-intercept, y must be 0, right? So when we write that, I'm going to show you how to solve it algebraically, but looking at your, your answers, we can already find the letter B where y is 0. None of the other ones have a y of 0, um, so that we could have, without even doing math, we just needed to know that an x-intercept has a y value of 0 and it's b. But I'm also going to show you in case you ever have something that's like fill in the blank and it's asking you for that. So if you know that y equals 0, then we can solve for x because we can plug a 0 in for y. So let's just say we had 4x minus 3. Instead of y, I'm going to plug in a 0 equals negative 12. So we're going to have 4x. Negative 3 times 0 is 0, negative 12, and then I can just divide both sides by 4. So if you ever had to fill in the blank here, you could always do it this way, or just understanding that an x-intercept, the y has to be 0, we could have found our answer without doing a single um, algebraic equation. <laughs> All right, so... Number 29, find the slope m of the line passing through two points. So when you have something like this, um, it's pretty simple. We need a formula. So there is a slope formula. So in our slope formula, we have, let me adjust myself, sorry. We have m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Now, I'm just going to give you just kind of a little... Um, tip that you can use. Whenever I am solving for this, I always set it up this way. I put in my minus signs first, especially when we're already dealing with negatives up here. Um, we want to make sure that we don't lose that negative sign because it can, does make a huge difference. So let's go ahead and uh, label our points. So I'm going to do x1 and y1, x2 and y2, and then we're just going to use those and plug them into here. So y2 is negative 2, y1 is negative 3. Do you see why I did that negative sign ahead of time? Sometimes I would have just written negative 3 and forgot. There's a minus sign in front of it. x2, which is 0, minus x1, 
which is negative 4. So now we're going to go ahead and solve again. Negative 2 plus, or I'm sorry, negative 2 minus negative 3. Well, having two negatives just makes it, um, it's a double negative, makes it a plus positive. So we actually have negative 2 plus positive 3, which is 1. And then this does the same thing. So 0 plus 4 is 4. So your answer is